the exponential smoothing. Uh, we will give first a comparison of the exponential smoothing and the moving average method. Uh, we have some similarities. Both methods are appropriate for stationary series like this. You don't have, uh, or at least you don't know about any uh, dependencies, trends, seasons, any other dependencies. So you should try to make a forecast which will be valid for the coming periods until some more information is received. Uh, they both will depend on a single parameter, the n parameter in uh, the moving average, number of uh, uh, data points to include, and the smoothing constant alpha in the exponential smoothing, which is the, uh, the weight of the new or the most recent observation compared to the, the previous or the forecast for the same uh, period. <coughs> uh, they will both be behind a trend, so when they are updated <coughs> they will not uh, discover a trend until uh, <coughs> after, um, after a while of, uh, of new data. Uh, but of course when you update the methods and you get uh, uh, data points which is over or eventually below the forecast, you will have to adjust the forecast. So if you get a new data point which is higher than the forecast, then this line will be adjusted, of course, and the same uh, when you get lower data points. Uh, and this point here, you can achieve the same distribution of forecast error by setting the alpha equal to 2 divided by n plus 1. I will, very short, just describe how this is uh, found because uh, uh, the for the methods to be consistent with respect to the average h, you should set, you should set the average h, which is uh, n plus 1 divided by 2 for the moving average, and the average h in the exponential smoothing method will be 1 divided by uh, alpha. And solving this equation with respect to alpha, then you will get uh, the formula which uh, is on uh, point number 4 in the sim similarities here. The alpha should be equal to 2 divided by n plus 1. Which means <coughs> If you use an alpha of 0 0.1, the similar number uh, or the number of uh, uh, data points in the moving average method, uh, which will uh, be uh, make the, the both methods with the same distribution of forecast error, will actually be uh, 19. Zero point one will be two divided by nineteen plus one, and similarly, like we used then an n equal to three in the moving average method, then alpha would be like uh, two divided by three plus one, which is zero point five. Uh, this uh, combination here, or, or this. Uh, values of the different parameters between the different uh, methods uh, is the situation where both methods would have the same distribution of forecast errors. But this doesn't mean that they will have give exactly the same uh, forecast. The methods are different, they will give different uh, uh, forecast, but when this, uh, when this situation appears, then you can actually compare that methods because they will have the same distribution of the forecast error. They will be uh, more or less uh, have, have the same accuracy. Okay, we can also look at the differences, and uh, we talked about that the ES exponential smoothing will carry all the past history, but the uh, the importance or, or the weight of the old data points will be smaller and smaller. Uh, but they still will still be uh, some kind of included in the forecast method. Uh, the moving average will then eliminate the bad data or all the data after a certain number of, of periods. So after 
a period uh, and after the end periods the data point will be eliminated will not be a part of the uh, the base for for the forecast uh, and also difference the ma um, moving average will require all the n past data points while the exponential smoothing only requires the last forecast and the last observation of course the last forecast will depend on the previous observation but when you have this exact number you can just forget about the basis or you don't need to, to store it or have it uh, easy available so then exponential smoothing will require the last forecast and the last observation like in this formula here observation and forecast and then you should be able to get a forecast for the coming period or the coming periods if you are forecasting for longer uh, time uh, periods into the future important thing here is to decide or find the value of the smoothing constant the alpha value which then will tell the weight of the latest demand compared to the latest forecast <coughs> So, let's now have a look at, uh, use the same example as we uh, showed for, for the moving average, and then show how we can use the exponential smoothing <coughs> methods in this case to make forecast for the coming periods. Uh, we remember that we have first the observation of 200. And uh, then, it was period number one. And then we should be able to make a forecast by using the formula here, but now we don't have an. Uh, exact that forecast for this period so then we should just assume to get started that the forecast is equal to the demand so we need to assume something to get uh, get started here and this is a well, good way of, uh, of starting assume that the first uh, period then the forecast is equal to the and then we should be able to make a new forecast for the next period and then the F2, forecast for period 2, uh, will, of course, we need to determine the value of the smoothing constant. And in this example, from which is taken from the textbook, the alpha value is set to be equal to 0 0.1. Let's use that, that one first. 0 0.1, that means 10% weight for the last demand and 90% weight of the last forecast. And that means, of course, when you are making a forecast for period number 2, 0 0.1 multiplied by the last demand, which is 200, um, and plus 0 0.9 multiplied by the last forecast, which is 200. And of course, this will also give us a value of 200. So the forecast for period number two will also be 200. And if you use this formula here, we should say that the forecast for period two is equal to the forecast for period one, which is 200 minus the smoothing constant alpha multiplied by the difference between the forecast and the demand. But since both are 200, this is equal to zero. So then still we will end up with the same value, forecast of 200. So let's now assume that in uh, period two, we get the new data, new information, which says that the observation for the demand in period two was 250, which is higher than the forecast. That means we have a forecast here, then we get a new observation which is higher, and then we need to adjust the forecast. So we will end up somewhere here. Forecast 
since the actual demand is <coughs> higher than the forecast, then the new forecast will be higher than the previous one. But still, we have one single <coughs> number, which is the forecast for all the coming periods. So the F3 forecast for period 3 will now be 0 0.1 multiplied by the new demand, 250, plus 0 0.9 multiplied by the previous forecast, 200, and this will give us a value of 205. So forecast for period 3, 205. So this was the forecast when alpha is equal to 0 0.1. But we, have, we, we, we can also look at another situation when we have a higher uh, smoothing constant. Let's assume now that we also want to check what will happen if we have a smoothing constant of 0 0.4, which is rather high. This means that the weight of the previous demand will be much higher than in the situation where the smoothing constant is only 0 0.1. So this will be in the second option here, alpha is 0 0.4. Let's now try to calculate the value in that case. To say now that the value, uh, value here will, uh, will actually be, uh, be the same because the will be no difference since the forecast and the demand is, is the same. But when we are calculating the forecast for period three, we will actually get a different value when using alpha equal to 0 0.4 instead of 0 0.1. So let's now here assume that alpha is 0 0.4. We get the forecast for period three will now be 0 0.4 multiplied by the new demand, the new data value, which is 250, plus 1 minus 0 0.4, 1 minus alpha, that will now be 0 0.6, multiplied by the previous forecast, which was 200. And this will now give us a much higher forecast. It will give us the value of 220. So here we can see that the very high demand in period number two will of course affect the forecast for period number three by calculating or uh, estimating a higher value of the demand in that period. But when you are using a high smoothing constant, a high value of alpha, then of course the weight of 250, the very high demand in this, this period, will then affect uh, the forecast much more. So here, 205 versus 220, uh, which is uh, where the reason is the, the difference between the, uh, the possible or, or the smoothing constant here, 0 0.1 or 0 0.4. Okay, let's now assume that we get the new data point, 175, which was the value in period 3. And now we can see that here we get a value which is lower than the forecast, and that means that the value of the forecast will have to be adjusted down again. So to make a forecast for period number four, let's now first check the 0 0.1 situation. 0 0.1 multiplied by the new value of the demand, 175, plus 0 0.9, one minus alpha, <coughs> multiplied by the previous forecast for alpha equal to 0 0.1, this is 205. This 
gives us a value of 202. Not, not here. <coughs> 0 0.1 multiplied by 175 plus 0 0.9 multiplied by 205 gives us a forecast of 202 for period number 4. Lower than the previous forecast, but still higher than the first forecast here. So, according to new values of the demand, new data points in the, uh, the historical data, then we are adjusting the forecast for the coming periods. Okay, let's now look at the situation where alpha is equal to 0 0.4. 40% weight on the last demand. Then we have the F4 here. 0 0.4 multiplied by the new measured value, 175. Plus 1 minus 0 0.4. 0 0.6 multiplied by the previous forecast. And now the previous forecast here was 220 and the result here is also 202 so here we actually will end up with the same uh, forecast for period number 4 but we have seen that the difference for period number 3 wa was quite uh, significant here 205 versus 220 so we can see when using a high value of alpha, the importance of the last measured value will be higher. And when you have a very large value here of 250, you will get uh, uh, quite uh, a high raise of, of, the, uh, of the forecast up to 220 compared to 205 when you only use 0.1. Uh, and also when you get a new small value here of 175 you will get some slight adjustment here down to 202 and you will get a much <coughs> higher adjustment but still you will end up actually with the, the same forecast here of course this is a coincidence that you end up with exactly the same value here but important thing to know is that uh, when you're using a high value of the uh, uh, of the smoothing constant then the importance or the weight of the last measured demand will be higher compared to the last uh, forecast. In some markets, some uh, <coughs> situation, this uh, might be uh, it, it might be a good thing to, to use high value there because the last the demand might say something about, uh, uh, well, have some more importance compared when you are trying to estimate the, the demand in the coming periods. In some other situation when there are no uh, dependencies. This is more or less completely random where you, uh, where you end up. Then you should try to have a low value of the la last demand and rather use the uh, uh, higher weight <coughs> on the last forecast. When we look to the Excel sheet, which I uploaded last week, we can see that here, this is a sheet First, we will look at the moving average, then we can look at the exponential smoothing. And here, we will get, here is the actual demand for this example, and we will get the forecast using the exponential smoothing method. Uh, and of course, we will have the absolute uh, deviation and uh, uh, the square of the deviation between the forecast and, and the demand, and you can find the MAD and the MSE values here. Uh, here we have the formula uh, coded in Excel for exponential smoothing, and we can see that this cell C15 uh, is the alpha value here, in this case 0 0.1, multiplied by B3 which is the demand, which is, uh, or the, the new the demand. And then 1 minus the alpha value multiplied by D3, uh, which is the, uh, the previous forecast, which is made as we uh, used for making a forecast for the new period. And 
using a spreadsheet like this, it's very easy to say that, okay, here we have using the alpha of 0 0.1. Let's change it to 0 0.4. And then we will get some other uh, values on, on the uh, forecast. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can see here, using 0 0.1, we will have a rather stable forecast here. The yellow line, it will not uh, change very much from one period to the other. But using a larger value, that's 0 0.5, which is uh, quite high, then we can see that the actual forecast, which wi will follow the actual the previous demand in a much higher uh, degree. So here, you have an increase from this period to this period, and then in the next period, you will increase with the forecast. And then you will go down, and then the yellow line will follow the blue line one period uh, later. So a much higher degree with when you have a, a large alpha uh, compared to when you have a small alpha. If you have one, then of course you can see that the forecast will be exactly the same as in the previous period. This uh, spreadsheet was uh, uploaded in uh, Frontier last week, so you can study it. and. Uh, of course, it's very easy to, when you have a spreadsheet like this, it's very easy <coughs> to, to check and, and compare different values of the smoothing constant in, in this case. <coughs> okay, I will now start solving one of the problems from the textbook, and you should, of course, uh, uh, well, try to finish it by yourself. I will also upload a, uh, well, a small solution to it, at least some uh, uh, the values of the solution, but uh, to, uh, to be able to uh, to use this, this method, uh, like uh, most uh, courses when you are dealing with formulas, you should try to, to use it, use them yourself, try to calculate yourself, find out is this uh, correct, Why am I able to, uh, to uh, use these formulas and get the, the correct uh, answers, because these types of, uh, of formulas are, are typically uh, questions that you will get on, on an exam, for example, and also later when you come out in the real world and, and um, starting to work, then you should be able to, to calculate and use these uh, formulas by yourself. Uh, let's uh, now start looking at the page 73 in the textbook, problem 2.24. Page 73. And here we have, um, we are observing uh, weekly sales of a ball pen hammer uh, at the Tone hardware store over an eight week period. And we can see that we have eight data points, eight number of, of sales for the weeks. 14, 9, 30, 22, 34, 12, 19, and 23. And here on problem A, we should use the moving average to forecast the sales, determine the one step ahead forecast for week four to eight when using a number of, uh, uh, of three in the um, a three week moving average, where moving average when the n value is equal to three. Uh, problem B, solve the same problem, but use the exponential smoothing method with an alpha constant, the value of alpha equal to 0 0.15. Find the exponential smoothing forecast for weeks four to, uh, through eight. And to get started, as we remember, we need to start here, we just assume that the forecast was the same as the demand. No. In this case, we said uh, we will assume that the forecast for week four is the same as found by using the uh, the three week uh, moving average method from part A. Uh, then you should compare the forecast error and uh, look at the MAD, and also you can have a look at the MSE uh, different forecast error, and and then see which of the methods are best in this case. 
uh, when you are uh, comparing this um, by using the, the forecast error methods. <coughs> and then what is the exponential smoothing forecast made at the end of week six for the sales in week 12? And I can answer the last question immediately. Uh, not by numbers, but of course, since we are dealing with stationary series, here we don't know about any trend or eventually other dependencies. When you are in week six or whatever period you are in, you are making a forecast which is one particular number, and that would be the same forecast if this is week six. You are forecasting for week seven, the same number as week eight, nine, ten, and so on, week twelve. So the forecast will be exactly the same for all the coming periods, since this is a method for stationary series. You don't know about any dependencies. When we are continuing on the topic of uh, trend-based methods, then we should be able to adjust. <coughs> the forecast according to how many periods into the future we are forecasting. But here, we are only dealing with stationary series and then we make a forecast. That is the value for all the coming periods until we get some new information. <coughs> but, okay, let's now try to solve this problem by using the two methods for stationary series. The moving average and the exponential smoothing. And uh, we will now use the first three data observation as the basis for the method. So let's now assume that we have three. One, two, three. Four and five. Let's use this first now. And the three first are used as the basis. And we have the actual demand, period 1 is 14, period 2 is 9, and period 3 is 30. Let's now use this information to find a forecast for period number 4 by using the moving average. And a of three, three period moving average. And then, of course, moving average use the demand for these three periods. 30 plus 9 plus 14 divided by 3 should be 17.67. And let's now assume that we can use fractions here. Of course, when you are dealing with the uh, items which cannot be, be split, then you should round to the, the closest integer. But here, 17.67 would be the 17.67 is the value, the average of the three data points, 30, 9, and 14. Similarly, uh, if we continue here, And now we'll also try to use the exponential smoothing method of uh, alpha value of 0 0.15. We should, as the, the problem text said, that we should use the same value, the same forecast as, as found by the moving average method to get started, 17.67. And uh, we should be able to compare these two methods. 
uh, let's first have a column here for the absolute value of the deviation, the <coughs> absolute forecast error. And also, we can take the square of that one to, comp to uh, calculate the, um, the mean squared error and, and, uh, and find also that particular forecast. Uh, and do the same here for uh, the exponential smoothing method. So, we have a forecast based on the actual demand for the three first week in this period. Then, let's now see what happens when we get the new data. And the data for week number four was 22, demand of 22. Then, the difference between the demand and the forecast 22 minus 17.67 uh, will be 4.33 and the square of 4.33 is 18.75 and this is of course the same here since we are dealing we are to start this method we are using the same format <coughs> for period number four so exactly the same numbers here 4.33 and 18.75. So let's now find the new forecast. New forecast, moving average for forecast for period number five. Moving average will now be the average of 9, 30, and 22. And here we will get the result of uh, 20.33. Now we will get a different forecast by using the exponential smoothing method. So let's try to calculate the forecast for period 5, which now will be the alpha 0.15 multiplied by the last demand 22 plus 1 minus alpha 0 0.85 and multiplied by the last forecast which was 17.67 And then here we will end up with a forecast which is 18.32. And here we can see that we have a rather well, significant difference between these two methods. Um, the data point of 14 is just excluded from the set in the moving average method. And we are including the new data point of 22 with the same weight as the previous uh, uh, demands. Uh, in the exponential smoothing metho method, we are using the smoothing constant of 0 0.15, which now is multiplied by the new measured value and the remaining part or the remaining weight, 85%, will be multiplied by the forecast, the latest forecast. So let's continue one more time and say that uh, we get the new data for period number five, which is 34. We will calculate the forecast error difference between 34 <coughs> and 20.33. Uh, will now be 13.67. The square of 13.67 was, uh, let's see, 186.87. Here we have a rather uh, large uh, deviation between the actual demand and the forecast, and we get a very high uh, value of, of the square of the deviation. 
uh, and uh, this is the what the difference between these two methods that uh, such high deviation will have a much higher weight than the small deviations like we saw here for period number four for example uh, similar here we had an even a smaller forecast for by using the exponential smoothing method and then with this high demand of 34 we will get a uh, deviation of 15.68 and the square of 15.68 will be 245.87 so these are the two first period of, of forecast using the three first weeks as the basis for the forecast then start a moving average method here and an exponential smoothing method here we can take one more month for period number or week number six we will now make a forecast for week number six and by using the moving averages method then we will use the three most recent data points 30, 22 and 34 and now we can see that this very low value of 9 is just excluded so then we should expect a very high uh, forecast by using this method and uh, the forecast will now be the average of these three numbers which is 28.67 Uh, by looking at the exponential smoothing method, we will use the F6, the forecast for period number 6, 15% smoothing constant, multiplied by the new measured value, the new data point, 34, plus 0 0.85, 1 minus the alpha value multiplied by the previous forecast and the previous forecast was 18.32 like this and then calculating this forecast on the exponential smoothing method for period number 6 we will get the value of 20.67 so a rather significant difference here on the two forecasting method, 28.67 by <coughs> the moving average and 20.67 for the exponential smoothing uh, method. And let's now, before we take the break, take a look at the accuracy of this forecast. Because in week number six, we get a rather small demand. We are now down to 12. So what uh, seems to be an increasing trend here from 14, 9 up to the values of 30, 22 and 34 are now, are now suddenly, well, getting very low again. So you get the data point which is far uh, under the, the action uh, forecast for both this method. But of course, here on the moving averages method, we have a very high forecast error because this one was now based on these three values here, it was very high, and now it's down to 12, so the difference here is now, uh, uh, it is 16.67, uh, the difference between 28.67 and 12, and the square of that will be 277.89. Uh, on the exponential smoothing method, we had a much lower forecast because the previous forecast ha uh, had actually a well, quite rather high weight, even if we had some very large uh, uh, data values in, in the previous uh, periods. So now here we will only get a forecast error of 20.67 minus 12, which is only 8.67, much lower than this value for the moving average method. 
and 8.67 to the power of 2 will be 75.70, which is much lower, of course, than this number, the square of 16.67. And so we can continue. Next data point in period number 7 will be in 19. And then use <coughs> the same uh, strategy, use the uh, well, of course, to, we should make the forecast first. Make the forecast by taking the average of the three latest values to get a value here. And use the formula for the exponential smoothing to get the forecast for period number seven. And then compare against the actual value for uh, of 19, which is the measured value for that period. And do the same for period number eight. And eventually, you will then find that <coughs> in this case, the both the MAD and the MACE, uh, the m measures of the forecast error, uh, are lower by using the exponential smoothing method than when using the moving averages. But this doesn't really mean that exponential smoothing is a better method than moving average in, in all cases, but at least in our example, it seems that this exponential smoothing method is giving a more accurate forecast than the moving averages method. Okay, so more calculations. You should finalize this example by example by, uh, by yourself, and I will also upload uh, some uh, solution to this one in uh, uh, in front after this lecture. Then we take a break. Continue in uh, 15 minutes, and then I will continue with <coughs> methods trend-based series when you have trends, not stationary series like this, but you can identify an increasing or decreasing